words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, Virgin all, all the angels, angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. And let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, we pray, O Lord, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah rose after a meal at Shiloh and presented herself before the Lord at the time. Eli the priest was sitting on a chair near the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In her bitterness, she prayed to the Lord weeping copiously and she made a vow promising, O Lord of hosts, if you look with pity upon the misery of your handmaid, if you remember me and do not forget me, if you give your handmaid a male child, I will give him to the Lord for as long as he lives. Neither wine nor liquor shall he drink, and no razor shall ever touch his head. As she remained long at prayer before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth. For Hannah was praying silently. Though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli, thinking her drunk, said to her, How long will you make a drunken show of yourself? Sober up from your wine. It isn't that, my lord, Hannah answered. I am an unhappy woman. I have had neither wine nor liquor. I was only pouring out my troubles to the Lord. Do you think your handmaid, a ne'er do well? My prayer has been prompted by my deep sorrow and misery. Eli said, go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She replied, think kindly of your maidservant and left. She went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and no longer appeared downcast. Early the next morning they worshipped before the Lord and then returned to their home in Ramah. When Elkanah had relations with his wife Hannah, the Lord remembered her. She conceived, and at the end of her term, bore a son whom she called Samuel since he had been asked since she had asked the Lord for him the word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Can I do the next one? Okay. our responsorial psalm my heart exalts in the Lord my savior My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. The bowels of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down, not, he casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor 
and makes rich. He humbles, he also exalts. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap he lifts up the poor to seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to Capernaum with his friends, or with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, as we enter now into this long stretch of prayer we call ordinary time, church takes us back to the very beginnings of Jesus' earthly ministry so that we can indeed live his life in our life from the Feast of the Nativity in our everyday choices and actions. We're meant to see today in this reading from Mark, in that light, our everyday choices, Jesus' opposition. Church invites us to see what is the most opposed dimension of our earthly journey to the teachings of Jesus. So often throughout the year, we hear it is the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, other religious leaders. It is they who oppose Jesus. Not so in this reading. We're meant to see it is the demons the demonic. That is the fundamental opposition to the Lord's work in our life, yours, mine, and the church's. And it is an easy misreading of this text. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? And the next line church proposes through the Holy Spirit is the entire encapsulated invitation. I know who you are, says the man with the demonic spirit, the Holy One of God. And often we are told that means that even the demons recognize God and fundamentally obey him. But clearly they don't. This is, as Dr. Tim Gray points out, this is a form, the speech that the demonic man in the temple uses is in fact a form of exorcism, exactly like what we do in our rite of Christian initiation of adults, those who choose to come into relationship with the Holy Catholic Church are invited to examine their allegiance to God by disavowing their allegiance to the spirit of this age and world. So friends, let's ask ourselves, what is our interior opposition to the Lord? What might be our patterns of selfishness, of resistance, 
of self-will, which we see so manifestly and rigidly displayed in this text. It is the demon himself trying to exercise Jesus of Nazareth as the Son of God. This is intended to wake us up. That can be our disposition unless and until we rightly align our love, our intellect, and our will sacramentally to the Son of God. The demons which continue to lurk and continue to vex, continue to confuse and divide to this day, that is the real opposition to the Lord. Let's reflect on how we can be clear about our own patterns of illusion and complicity with the unclean spirits opposed to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For church leaders, may they be conformed ever more fully to Christ through their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise authority in government, may God soften their hearts to the plight of those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with the burden of discrimination, may God strengthen them and grant them his comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, May the calling of Christ echo in our hearts, giving clarity to our desires and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcome into the eternal light of Christ in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Jim Wellborn, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you created us, you love us, and our hearts will be restless unless they rest in you. Help us trust in you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lords. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's offering, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly ask, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, calling us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, 
a people of your possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and to make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolles peccata mundi, may the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but the loving mercy be for me, protection in my body and the remedy. Amen. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words and my soul shall be healed. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly, says the Lord Jesus.
and let us pray. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may serve you with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Make it a great day, everyone. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness.